Prince Fumimaro Kano, Jin Wei Wen Mo Kano Fumimaro, often Kanoi, the 12th of October 1891 to the 16th of December 1945, was a Japanese politician in the Empire of Japan who served as the 34th, 38th, and 39th Prime Minister of Japan and founder leader of the Imperial Rule Assistance Association. He was Prime Minister in the lead up to Japan entering World War II. Early life Prince Fumimaro Kano was born into the ancient Fujiwara clan, and was the heir of the Kano family in Tokyo. His younger brother Hidemaro Kanoi was a symphony conductor. Kano's father, Atsumaro, had been politically active, having organized the Anti-Russia Society in 1903. In 1904, Atsumaro's death left Kano, at the age of 12, with the title of prince, plenty of social standing but not much money. He studied Marxian economics at Kyoto Imperial University. In 1916, he automatically became a member of House of Peers according to his hereditary title. Prince Kano successfully lobbied to be included in the Japanese delegation to the Paris Peace Conference, 1919. In 1918, prior to Versailles, he published an essay titled, Reject the Anglo-American Centered Peace. Ying Mi Ben Wei No Ping He Zu Yi Wo Pai Su. Following a translation by American journalist Thomas Franklin Fairfax Millard, Japanese political advisor Sionji Kinmochi wrote a rebuttal in his journal, Millard's Review of the Far East. During the Paris Peace Conference, Kano was one of the Japanese diplomats who proposed the racial equality proposal for the Covenant of the League of Nations. When the racial equality clause came up before the committee, the following nations voted for it, Japan, France, Serbia, Greece, Italy, Brazil, Czechoslovakia, and China, but the American President Woodrow Wilson overturned the vote by declaring that the clause needed unanimous support. Kano took the rejection of the racial equality clause very badly, and was afterwards known to have had a grudge against white people who he felt had humiliated Japan by rejecting the racial equality clause. In 1925, Kano gained favorable public attention by supporting a bill extending suffrage to all males aged 25 and over. See General Election Law. In 1933, he was elected president of the House of Peers. He was awarded the Grand Cordon of the Order of the Sacred Treasure in 1934. Prime Minister and war with China In June 1937, Prince Kano became Prime Minister. One month later, Japanese troops clashed with Chinese troops near Peking in the Marco Polo Bridge incident. Kano dispatched three divisions of troops, admonishing the military to be sure not to escalate the conflict. Within three weeks the army launched a general assault. Kano and his cabinet feared that Japanese troops would not respect any peace agreement. He was also unsure that Chiang Kai-shek could control his own forces. In August, Chinese sentries killed two Japanese Marines who crashed a gate at a Chinese airfield in Shanghai. Kano agreed with Army Minister General Hajime Sugiyama to send two divisions to defend Japanese honor. The Battle of Shanghai broke out. His cabinet then issued a declaration, accusing both nationalist and communist Chinese of increasingly provocative and insulting behavior toward Japan. In December, Imperial General Headquarters, a structure completely autonomous from the civilian government being responsible only to the emperor, ordered its forces in China to drive toward Nanjing, the Chinese capital. Nanjing was captured within a few weeks, after which the Japanese army committed the infamous Nanjing Massacre, killing upwards of 250,000 civilians. After taking Nanking, the Japanese army was doubtful about its ability to advance down the Yangtze River Valley, and favored taking up a German offer of mediation to end the war with China. Kano by contrast, was not interested in peace, and instead chose to escalate the war by suggesting deliberately humiliating terms that he knew Chiang Kai-shek would never accept, in order to win a total victory over China. In January 1938, Kano's government announced that it would no longer deal with Chiang, but would await the development of a new regime. When later asked for clarifications, Kano said he meant more than just non-recognition of Chiang's regime but rejected it and would eradicate it. The American historian Gerhard Weinberg wrote about Kano's escalation of the war. 
the one time in the decade between 1931 and 1941 that the civilian authorities in Tokyo mustered the energy, courage and ingenuity to overrule the military on a major peace issue they did so with fatal results fatal for Japan, fatal for China, and for Kano himself." Meanwhile, Kano and the military pushed a national mobilization law through the Diet, this allowed the central government to control all manpower and material. Japanese victories continued at Shuzhou, Hankou, Canton, Wuchang, Hanyang, but still the Chinese kept on fighting. Kano, stating that he was tired of being a robot for the military, resigned in January 1939, and was appointed chairman of the Privy Council. Kiichiro Hiranuma succeeded him as prime minister. Kano was awarded the first class of the Order of the Rising Sun in 1939. Kano was Prime Minister during the Suyama Massacre, which happened on 21 May 1938. Kano's second term, the Matsuoka foreign policy Due to dissatisfaction with the policies of Prime Minister Mitsumasa Yonai, the Japanese army demanded Kano's recall as Prime Minister. On 23 June, Kano resigned his position as chairman of the Privy Council, and on 16 July 1940, the Yonai cabinet resigned and Kano was appointed prime minister. One of his first moves was to launch the League of Diet members supporting the prosecution of the Holy War to counter opposition from politicians such as Deputy Saito Takao who had spoken against the Second Sino-Japanese War in the Diet on 2 February. Against the advice of his political allies and the emperor, Kano appointed Yosuke Matsuoka as his foreign minister. Matsuoka was popular with the army and the Japanese public, having established himself as the man who angrily led Japan out of the League of Nations in 1933. Kano and Matsuoka based their foreign policy on a document that had been drawn up by the army. As a result of this policy, it was agreed that Japan would try to secure its position in China, defuse the conflict with the Soviet Union, move troops into Indochina, and prepare for a military response from Britain and possibly the United States. Following the fall of France, Japan stationed troops in French Indochina in September 1940. On 27 September 1940, the Tripartite Pact was signed, aligning Japan, Germany and Italy. Matsuoka attempted to secure Japan's position with a neutrality agreement between Japan and the Soviet Union through Molotov and Stalin. Japan agreed to relinquish mineral extraction rights in the northern half of Sakhalin, but otherwise made no concessions. For Japan, the pact made it less likely that the United States and the Soviet Union would team up against them. This neutrality agreement was honored by both sides until 1945. Attempts to avoid war with the United States In April, 1941, a triumphant Matsuoka returned to Japan, but Kano had in hand a peace proposal from the United States. The proposal included American recognition of Manchukuo, the merging of Chiang's government with the Japan-backed reorganized national government of China, withdrawal of Japanese troops from China and mutual respect for its independence, and an agreement that Japanese immigration to the United States shall proceed, "...on the basis of equality with other nationals and free from discrimination." A meeting for negotiation between United States President Franklin D. Roosevelt and Kano was proposed for Honolulu, to commence as early as May. Each side believed that it represented the starting position of the other side, however it had actually been drawn up by two American marinal priests and two mid-level Japanese officials. Kano, believing the document was an agreed starting point for negotiation, began to line up support for the idea of a summit conference in Hawaii. However, Secretary of State Cordell Hull and Roosevelt had no intention of bargaining from this draft. Back in Japan, Matsuoka was furious that Kano had offered concessions behind his back. Kano was unable to wear him down, and was afraid of the army's reaction if he overrode the foreign minister. In the end, Matsuoka replaced the draft with Japan's co-prosperity policy. This document was conveyed to the Americans on 12 May, and found to be unacceptable. On the 22nd of June 1941, Germany invaded the Soviet Union and once again Japan was caught completely by surprise. Hurried conferences took place at the highest levels. 
The question was whether this represented an opportunity for Japan. In the end, the formal leadership group, called the Imperial Headquarters Cabinet Liaison Conference, agreed on the Southern strategy. It also agreed that German progress should be closely monitored. Matsuoka transmitted a provocative statement to Hull, and informed the Soviet ambassador that the Axis Agreement took precedence over the Japan-Soviet Neutrality Pact. Kano resigned, and formed a new government without Matsuoka as foreign minister. The new foreign minister assured the Soviet ambassador that Japan would honor the neutrality agreement, even though Germany was urging its Japanese ally to attack the Russians from the east. On 28 July 1941, Japanese forces occupied all of French Indochina. The United States was forewarned of this move through its monitoring of Japan's cable traffic. Roosevelt immediately froze Japanese assets in the United States. Great Britain and the Dutch East Indies government did likewise. Roosevelt also placed an embargo on oil exports to Japan. Over 80% of Japan's need was being met through American imports, therefore on 31 July, the Navy informed the Emperor that Japan's oil stockpiles would be completely depleted in two years. Kano had been counting on the Navy to restrain the Army from its aggressive designs. Now, however, the Navy Chief of Staff Osami Nagano argued that if war with the United States was inevitable, it should start right away. Kano made one more desperate attempt to avert war. He proposed a personal summit with Roosevelt in the United States if necessary to come to some understanding. Kano secured backing from the Navy and the Emperor for this move. The Army agreed, provided that Kano adhere to the consensus foreign policy, and be prepared to go to war if his initiative failed. Roosevelt and Hull accepted the invitation, since they were keen to delay Japan's potential attack. Roosevelt told Ambassador Nomura that he would like to see more details of Kano's proposal, and he suggested that Juneau, Alaska, might be a good spot for a meeting. On 5 September, Kano met the Emperor with Chiefs of Staff General Hajime Sugiyama and Admiral Osami Nagano. Alarmed, the Emperor asked what happened to the negotiations with Roosevelt. Kano replied that, of course, negotiations were primary, and the military option was only a fall-back position if negotiations failed. The emperor then questioned Sugiyama about the chances of success of an open war with the Occident. After Sugiyama answered positively, Hirohito scolded him, remembering that the army had predicted that the invasion of China would be completed in only three months. The next day the policy about the preparation for war against United States, England and Holland was formally proposed at the Imperial Conference. The Imperial Conference adopted the policy that would result in the attack on Pearl Harbor. The policy established a set of minimum demands that must be met through negotiations. If Kano's negotiations did not bear fruit by mid-October, Japan would commence hostilities against the United States, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. While the Emperor received detailed reports from Sugiyama and Nagano about the operations in Southeast Asia and the attack of Pearl Harbor, Prime Minister Kano made one last desperate attempt to avoid war. That very evening, he arranged a secret dinner conference with American Ambassador Joseph Grew. He told Grew that he was prepared to travel to meet Roosevelt on a moment's notice. The ship had already been prepared. Ambassador Grew urged his superiors to advise Roosevelt to accept the summit proposal. However, in the end, Kano's last push for a diplomatic solution was made in vain. In a cabinet meeting on 14 October, Army Minister Hideki Tojo stated that negotiations had failed, the deadline had passed. At the close of this meeting, Kano realized he was not able to win Navy backing against the adamant Army stance. Kano resigned on 16 October 1941, one day after having recommended Prince Naruhiko Higashikuni to the Emperor as his successor. Two days later, Hirohito chose General Tojo as Prime Minister. In 1946, Hirohito explained this decision. I actually thought Prince Higashikuni suitable as chief of staff of the army, but I think the appointment of a member of the imperial house to a political office must be considered very carefully. Above all, in time of peace this is fine, but when there is a fear that there may even be a war, then more importantly, considering the welfare of the imperial house, I wonder about the wisdom of a member of the imperial family serving as prime minister." Six weeks later, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. Kano justified his demission to his secretary Kenji Tomita. Of course his imperial majesty is a pacifist and he wished to avoid war. 
When I told him that to initiate war was a mistake, he agreed. But the next day, he would tell me, you were worried about it yesterday but you do not have to worry so much, thus, gradually he began to lead to war. And the next time I met him, he leaned even more to war. I felt the emperor was telling me, my prime minister does not understand military matters. I know much more, in short, the emperor had absorbed the view of the army and the navy high commands. <laughs> Final years of the war and suicide Kano played a role in the fall of the Tojo government in 1944. In February 1945, during the first private audience he had been allowed in three years, he advised the emperor to begin negotiations to end World War II. According to Grand Chamberlain Hisanori Fujita, Hirohito, still looking for a Tenozen, a great victory, firmly rejected Kano's recommendation. After the beginning of the American occupation, Kano served in the cabinet of Prince Naruhiko Higashikuni, the first post-war government. Having refused to collaborate with U.S. Army officer Bonner Fellers in Operation Blacklist to exonerate Hirohito and the imperial family of criminal responsibility, he came under suspicion of war crimes. In December 1945, during the last call by the Americans for alleged war criminals to report to the Americans, he took potassium cyanide poison and committed suicide. It was 1945, exactly 1,300 years after his ancestor, Fujiwara no Kamatari, led a coup d'état at court during the Soga clan. His grave is at the Kano clan cemetery at the temple of Daito Kuji in Kyoto. His grandson, Morihiro Hosokawa, became prime minister 50 years later. <laughs> Ancestry <laughs>